Right, well, this man has been there before, and he certainly looks like it. The number one middleweight contender back in a championship setting, and we've talked about this a lot, but he made himself undeniable with this run back to contention. Now he tries to rest away the goal. That's not easy, John. It's not easy to make your way back because you have been there before, and maybe it didn't work out for you, but to stay positive, to have that steel trap of a mind that allows for you to rebuild yourself makes you know when you do get back, you have a greater appreciation for the opportunity. Tonight he said he intends to finally cash in. There are a lot of high-level guys at 185 pounds, a lot of contenders waiting in the wings. This challenger knows he has to maximize this opportunity in front of him tonight. Folks, you know who he is, the undisputed UFC middleweight champion. This man has run roughshod through one of the deepest divisions in the UFC, and he is showing no signs of slowing down. He ain't slowing down, John. He, he loves the ability to call himself the champ. A smile is on his face every time somebody goes, hey, champ, how you doing? The guy lives for it. He lives for the adulation. He lives for the applause. He lives for the ability to stay in the spotlight. He will fight to defend his title as if his life depended on it. Huge training camp for him. He feels like he has leveled up in a lot of disciplines of mixed martial arts. And man, if he presents an even better version, scary proposition for the challenger. All right, now our tale of the tape for this middleweight championship fight. Now for the introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> for this one. Right, early round action here, and as humbly as he could put it, Sean Strickland believes he has every advantage in this particular matchup. He is convicted that if this fight goes to the ground, he will be the stronger man. Also believes he can run some clock in the clinch if need be, given his opponent's obvious striking acumen. But Strickland is no slouch there as well. And there are many reasons why Sean Strickland methodically over the last four or five years has built himself into one of the very best middleweights on the planet. Oh, no pad on the foot. That's a solid. Oh, he's hurt. Oh, staying busy, fighting off of his back, and he lands. He passes the half. Strickland getting absolutely worked from the top here on the wrong end of nearly all of these ground and pound strikes. Good work with the ground and pound here by Duplessis. All right, side control now. Duplessis trying to lock up on a submission now. That dart choke is tight. Good job by the champ there. Sliding back up. Lands a strike now from the bottom. Nice work there by Duplessis. Well, he grounded him, and now he's trying to pound him out. Great ground strikes here. 
Just over two minutes to go. Motioning for his opponent to stand back up here. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. Oh, and right hand barely missed there. Well, eventually you know he's going to turn this defense into offense, but he's certainly doing a nice job on the defensive end this fall. They talk about the feeling out process. He's getting his opponent's timing. Now he's blocking everything. Expect counters as we go forward. Nice shot there by the chair. He's got to throw that kick behind those punches. Under a minute now to go. Good job keeping that head off the center line. Slips to avoid the right hand. Body attack and it's worked. Oh, huge connection by him there. He needs to get on his bicycle, John. He needs to get into space so that he doesn't get finished. Oh! Another one! Final seconds here. Round two next. All right, heading back to the corner now, and we will keep a close eye on things. Strickland's corner has some work to do. They're going to take a look at that lip. Hopefully the cut man can do his thing and just make sure that it doesn't continue to bleed and provide further adversity for him in this fight. All right, so Jarzinho Rosenstrike versus Alistair Overeem, it is not. But let us look back at some of the replays from that round because there's a cut on the lip now that he's got to deal with. Long as I ain't never got to see nothing like that again in my entire life, <laughs> I'm okay calling fights. And this cut is not that. But it was the perfect shot that landed in the right spot that opened up Ready that fight. cut on the lip. All right, so we will see if the cut man can do anything about that and for the fighter, try to raise his guard and be more sound defensively in this next round. All right, next round is now underway. Hopefully the action continues at a high level. Pretty good first five minutes. Pretty good first five minutes. Both of them can really pick it up. Let's see who decides they're going to lead the dance as we go forward. Whiffs on that offering. Slips. Right hook to the head blocked. Pressure and hit the take there now. Nice leg kick there by Drakus Duplessis. Takedown defense holds up. Just over three minutes now to go. Oh, he's got the hands going. He gets to the single collar time. Look for him to keep that elbow tight and throw punches with his free hand. Well, champ, I don't see that well, but it's hard to miss the redness underneath that elbow. A lot of bodily investment from his opponent. Tonight. Yeah, it's an investment. John, it may not pay dividends right now, but the more you go there, the more damage you do. He landed that massive shot. Now he needs to try to find the next shot, the follow-up shot, that will finish the fight. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Oh, again! All right, well, he rocked him pretty good, but... Didn't sort of smell blood in the water, and now his opponent's back in the water. I mean, blood's in the water. You gotta go and finish. You gotta go find the finish. You cannot let him off the hook like that, because now he will be motivated to try to go and hurt you as you hurt him. He's got that single collar tie locked in. Beautiful combination of punches to the head. He gets tagged again. Under a minute now to go in this one. Duplessis' cheek looks like it's cut. Yes, it is. Starting to bleed a little bit now. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. Straight right is there. Strickland's nose is bleeding now, so we'll see how he handles that adversity, but nothing ideal about it here in the middle of this fight. 
is over and you see some obvious bleeding now. Looks like the cut is on the nose. Yes, it is. Cutman will try to get in there and shut it, but of course, as soon as he absorbs a strike this next round, that thing could reopen. Certainly bears watching here moving forward. Well, he had a lot more than a puncher's chance coming in. Big knockdown for him in the previous round. DC, talk us through the highlight. He got in his opponent's face, landed that big punch that put his opponent flat on his back. He couldn't get the finish, but if he lands one more time just like that, he will get the victory. You ready to fight? Ready. Go. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Lands a big elbow there. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. Duplessis' eye is starting to swell shut. Oh, and he caught the kick. All right, good job by him there to raise the guard and protect his head. He's doing a good job of keeping the guard high, locking his head, making sure he's not taking the damage strikes on top. Oh, that looks tight. Might be the beginning of the end. Very smart there. You never favor submission over a dominant position. All right, side control now, DC. You know he's in his element on the ground. A lot of tricks up his sleeve. A lot of tricks. Now he's got a good body position, yup. That was a slick transition. Three minutes now to go in this one. Duplessis is able to make a nice transition there back into side control. Great job landing from the top position. Try to take his opponents back here, and he does. Big ground and pound. Well, we may have the best cut men and women in the business, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to do much with that cut. It continues to widen with every passing stroke. And you're fighting a great fighter. It's hard to deal with the damage of the cut while dealing with the level of the fighter in front of you. Right now, you've got to do something different to try and change the way that this fight is playing out. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. Lands the ground and pound strike here. Oh, another strike lands from the top. Continuing to work out of the half guard. Right inside his opponent's guard here, DC. You don't want to play around here too long. No, you got to either have two hands in or two hands out. Our guys start to attack triangles. Duplessis back in half goal. Oh, good ground and pound here. Strickland's back into full guard. Well, perhaps it's a high fight IQ, perhaps it's obvious, but he is attacking that cut that is getting deeper by the minute. And it seems like the right decision because you can see his opponent starting to paw at it. You can see it starting to take an effect. It's messing with him mentally. For him, he's got to continue to attack that area and hope that it just keeps getting worse and worse. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides, really. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They meet in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. Ready to fight? Ready. Good. Fourth round, fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. All right, so here we go. You can feel the tension. Fourth round is underway. We'll see who has the upper hand here. You feel it inside of the arena. The fighters feel it inside of the octagon. It's palpable. The energy is crazy because you understand that in the next 10 minutes, someone's going to get a belt strapped around their waist. It's amazing. 
Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively protecting. Oh, there, and somehow his opponent's chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. He's got to start throwing down. Right into side control. He does a great job of getting to his position, landing effective strikes, and now his opponent's starting to swell. Dars, yep, he's trying to hit the Dars here. Oh, now it's getting tight. Good job by the champ there. Sliding back out. Well, he has expended a lot of energy going for these submissions. Oh, Sam just hits that with that off from DC. He is hurt. What a beautiful uppercut. It landed beautifully, perfectly. Oh, oh these guys are absolutely getting after him. Oh, well, he is really starting to apply a lot of pressure here down the stretch. Not as much offense earlier in the fight. He is making up for lost time. Oh, that will do it! Oh, my goodness! Yeah, man, crowd loving it. Just a gorgeous shot there to end the fight. Really just the way he drew it up. He found the opening and capitalized on it to the utmost extent. Nicely done to finish the fight. All right, Bruce Buffer is in there with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called to stop in this contest at three minutes, 17 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by knockout and new UFC middleweight champion of the world, Gregus Silva Duplessy. We are still digesting this result tonight. I barely got a voice, but we do have a new UFC middleweight champion.